Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Shabbos Daf Samaches. Perhaps we should begin back at the Mishnah uh, and Samach Zayin Omer Beis. Says the Mishnah, Klal Godel Omer B'Shabbos. A Klal Godel, a, a great, a major rule was, um, was said regarding Shabbos. Now we know that on Shabbos there are 39 Abbas Malachis, categories of uh, forbidden labors um, for Shabbos. So the Einish, the liability, the punishment as a result of doing any of those Malachis, if it's been intentionally done, then uh, the Einish is Skila. If, if there are Edim and uh, Bezdin is actually uh, giving that punishment, so it's a death by stoning. If there were no Edim and Bezdin cannot uh, apply the punishment, then the Einish is Karis, shortening of his, of his years. And if it's done be shaygig unintentionally, then the uh, einish is a carbon. It has to bring an atonement, a carbon chatas. The mission will give us three different categories, classifications of um, of chiyuvim, of chiyuvim, of chatas. Says the Mishnah, there is a klal gadol, a major klal, as follows. Category number one is kol shecheach iker shabbos. One forgets the entire concept of shabbos. He forgets about the. Um, about the Shabbos, about the Malachis, he forgets about the whole concept of Shabbos. The also Malachis Harbe, but Shabbos is Harbe. So this person who totally forgot about the concept of Shabbos, subsequently he did many Malachis throughout many Shabbosis. What is his liability? What is his carbon? He only brings one Chatas because, as opposed to Mazid, doing it very intentionally with the with the accountability is as a result an account of the of the actual maliciousness, the, the mice that's done intentionally. Here by Chatas, the point is that he forgot. It's unintentional. So the, the liability here, the, the um, what he's held accountable for is, is the mice obviously that he did, the the, car, the uh, malacha. But what was the cause? What was the good? What was the catalyst of this malacha? It was the shkaga, the, the forgetfulness, the forgetting of the Iker Shabbos, the entire concept of Shabbos. So there's only one real root here, the fact that he forgot about the concept of Shabbos. So therefore, regardless of how many malachas resulted from that shkoga from that forgetfulness, he brings one chatas, because the chatas is applied to his shkoga, to his forgetfulness. And the shikicha over here, the forgetfulness was related to the actual ikar, the concept of Shabbos, which is only one, therefore only one chatas is brought. So that's category number one, level number one. He forgets about the Iker Shabbos, he brings one chathos regardless of how many Averis he did. What's category number two, says the Mishnah, he did Iker Shabbos. So he's aware about the concept of Shabbos. What did he forget this time? He forgot that today is Shabbos, he made a mistake in the calendar, he thought today is Friday. And what happened as a result? He did many Malachis throughout many Shabbosis. So this Shabbos, he miscalculated, came next Shabbos, he again miscalculated. So as a result of these miscalculations of the day, he did many malachis. What type of chatos does he bring? Says the Mishnah, Hayidei, because Shabbos. He's aware about the concept of Shabbos. V'osom malachis harbe, but Shabbos is harbe. So he did many malachis throughout many Shabbos, forgetting that that day was indeed Shabbos. Chayev al kol Shabbos for Shabbos. In that case, the chatos relates to the day because the shkaga was the shigigal Shabbos. He forgot that today was Shabbos. Therefore, it needs to bring a chatas as a result of each, each shkaga separately, which was this day, next, next week it's going to be that day. So each, each shkaga requires a separate chatas. He doesn't need to bring separate chatas for the individual malachis that he transgressed on those days. He needs to bring one chatas for each Shabbos. What is the third category? He knows that today is Shabbos, but he forgot that these are considered to be malachis. V'asa malachis harbi, and as a result of that, he did many malachis with Shabbosis harbi throughout many Shabbosis, not knowing that these are malachis. So he forgot that these are obvious malachis. These are forbidden labors on Shabbos. Says the Mishnah Chayiv, I'll call av malacha malacha. He needs to bring a separate chatas for each av malacha. Since the forgetfulness, the shkaga, the shikicha over here was the fact that this is an av malacha. If so, it doesn't matter how many times he repeats it. Throughout many Shabbosis, he needs to bring one chatas for the source root, for the catalyst, for the gurim of his, of his avera, which is forgetting that this is an av malacha. 
So he brings a blo- uh, chatas on uh, the malacha that he did as it relates to the source, as it relates to the root, to the goyrim, to the shkaga, which is a shigagas malacha, and therefore one chatas, regardless of how many times you perform this specific malacha. Concludes the Mishnah. Ha'isa malacha is harbit. Main malacha achas. One who does many malachas, which all resemble one malacha, they fall into one category. They're all included under one banner of this specific av malacha. For instance, the derivatives of this malacha, in that case, ene chayav el achatas achas. You know, it only brings one chatas because each av malacha and anything contained therein only gets one chatas. So, in conclusion, Mishnah began with giving us three categories. Shigigas Iker Shabbos, he forgot about the main, the, the concept of Shabbos. In that case, he only brings one chatas regardless of how many malachas he does. Number two is Shigigas Shabbos. He forgot that today was Shabbos. Then he brings one chatas per Shabbos. Number three is uh, Shigigas Malachas. He forgot that these are malachas. Then he brings a chatas per each av malacha. Continues the Gemara, my timer, Tana Kla Gadol. Why does the Mishnah use the word Tkla Gadol, this major rule? My Tana Tana Kla Gadol, why major? Why not simply Kla Omer B'Shavas? What is the word Gadol coming to teach? Says the Gemara, Ilema Mishum De Kaboy Lemisni Oid Kla Acher. Is the reason why this Mishnah uses the word Gadol because later on the Mishnah will give us another Kla, another rule. And since this one over here in our Mishnah contains more details, more halachas than the other one, Therefore, the Mishnah titles it by calling it Klal Gadol. Once again, Because the Mishnah intends on listing us another rule which contains halachas. And this one over here is a larger Klal Tona Klal Gadol. That's why the Mishnah uses the word Klal Gadol. We find a similar phenomenon in the Mishnahis of Shviz, where the Mishnah begins by saying Klal Gadol over Bishviz, and then proceeds by giving another klal, another rule, and the first one contains more more halachas, more details than the second one. Therefore, this is a plausible explanation for there as well. Because the mission is going to go on and tell us another klal, which is a, uh, a smaller one. Therefore, it begins by terming the first one, Tana Klal Gadol, a major rule. So this formula will explain Shabbos, will explain Shviz. But it won't explain Maser. Vagabi Maser Diktoni. Klal Acher. In the, in the Mishnahis of Maser, we find that the, uh, the Mishnah has a Klal, uh, a one Klal, which has more details than the second Klal brought afterwards. Nevertheless, Vloitoni Klal Gadol. The first one is not called Klal Gadol. So why doesn't this formula apply there as well? Why are both rules, both, both lists, only refer to as Klal and not Klal Gadol. Omar of Yaisi Bar Abin. That's not the reason. It's not because the first list is, is larger and uh, more detailed than the second one. It, that's why we call it Klal Gadol. Rather, the reason is as follows. Omar of Yaisi Bar Abin. Shabbos or Shviz? The Isbu of Yisvil Toldois. There's something unique about Shabbos and Shviz. And both of them we find the concept of Avais, sources, Vitaldis, and derivatives, fathers and, and descendants. Therefore, Tana Godel. That's why the Mishnah uses the term Godel, because the Malachas of Shabbos have Avais and spread out into Toldis as well. And by Shviz as well, we find uh, things which are considered to be Avais and it extends to Toldis. So that's a Klal Godel, it's something which extends and grows. However, Maisa, the less be obvious for Tolis, by Maisa we don't have this concept of obvious for Tolis, Loitana, Klal Gadol, therefore over there, there's no mention of this term Klal Gadol. Let's take a look at Rashi, who explains this Gemara. It's right off on the right side here. Divra Maschil, Is be obvious, says Rashi. What are the obvious of Shabbos? Arboim Chasar Achas. So it's 40 minus 1, 39 obvious Malachis. What's unique about these, uh, these, um, Activities, these, these labors, Shahut Shukhala Mishkan. All these 39 malachites were needed for the construction of the Mishkan, and therefore they regard as always source malachites. They are told us, what are they told us? Hadoim is the achas. Have they told us today? Something which is similar to the obvious, something which resembles 
the source Malach is considered to be told this today. It's children. So by Shabbos we have the concept of Ovois, and the Ovois extend into Tolis. What about by Shemitah? Ovois to Shvis. What are considered to be the Ovois, the source Malachis of Shemitah? The Malachis that are forbidden to be performed on the, the seventh year in Eretz Yisrael. What are those Ovois Malachis? Zriya, planting Uktsira, harvesting Uzmira, pruning the, um, the, um, the Kair Machalei Sizmar, your vineyard, Uktsira, and harvesting your vineyard. So these are things which are actually said in the Pasuk, Lechsivan. They are clearly in the Pasuk. Therefore, they are regarded as Ovois. What are the Tolis? Other uh, labors that are done in the field and the vineyard, as the Gemara Cotton lists for us. So in both in both categories of, of Shabbos and the Shemitah, we find this concept of Oves, which extends into Todos, and therefore we use the term Klal Godel. It's a great, it's a, it's a Klal that includes Oves, which extends into Todos. In contrast to Maisa, which does not have this concept, therefore, there, the Mishnah simply uses the term klal without adding the word godo. Says the Gemara, Ula bar kapora, the tani klal godo master. What about bar kapora? We used to um, teach the seftas, the braises. So in his sefta, he indeed had the uh, girsa. He had the version of klal godo, even regarding master. My obvious. Who might tell this? According to this formula, according to your explanation, that a cloud godel relates to something, a halacha which carries with it obvious and told us. How are you going to explain Bar Kapar's version, who applies the term cloud godel to Marsha as well? Ella backs off the Gemara, no, love, high no time. This is not the reason why godel is used because of obvious and told us, because this won't work. This won't fly with Bar Kapar's version of Marsha. Says Gemara Ella rather, Godel Einshei Shal Shabbos Yosem Shal Shviz. The reason why we use the term Godel because it denotes a, a greatness, something more a chumra, an addition, an advantage. Now, now uh, Shabbos and Shviz are very similar. This Shabbos is the seventh day, Shviz is the seventh year. When the Mishnah uses the word Godel here, it's, it's trying to denote that Shabbos has an advantage over something else, over Shviz. How is that? Godel Einshei Shal Shabbos, the liability of Shabbos. The, the Anshim of Shabbos, the punishments apply, are applicable and manifested more than the one on, uh, by Shviz. Yoisim Shal Shviz. Why? Dilu Shabbos Isa. The, the Allah of Shabbos applies. Bein betolosh ben mechubar. Whether something is, was picked off the ground. Bein ben mechubar, something which was attached to the ground. Meaning, if something was taken out of the ground on Shab- an Arab Shabbos. So come Shabbos, it was already detached. Nevertheless, the malachas of Shabbos will apply there as well. Rashi says, for instance, toichen, grinding, velosh, kneading. These are malachas which apply to an item which was already off the ground, detached from the ground before Shabbos. So it applies, bein betalash, whether to something which was already detached before Shabbos, bein mechuber. And it applies to, to something which is uh, still attached to the ground on Shabbos, for instance, ksira, etc. So Shabbos has the advantage that the liability, the Einish of Shabbos, manifests itself in things which are detached or attached. However, the Shviyas, the Allah of Shviyas, well, doesn't apply to something which was taken off the ground, removed, detached before Shviyas. The Isa only applies to something which is actually attached to the ground on Shvita. So according to Rashi, it seems like we're speaking about the Allah that pertain to the Per Shviyas, for instance, the halacha that one, one must eat them, he can't uh, let them go to waste. He can't, uh, can't destroy them. The halacha that one must eat them can't do schayra business with it. The halacha of beer, one must make sure that the animals have access to this type of food. Otherwise, he needs to do beer, he needs to take it out of his house. He can't, uh, he can't store them. So there's different halachas which relate to the perish shvis. And these halachas strongly only relate to peris, which have kedusha shvis, meaning they were... They were picked on Shviyas, but something which was bitalish, something which was already picked before Shviyas, the halachas of Shmita, don't apply to them. According to Taisus, the more speaking about malachas of Shviyas, and those malachas only apply to uh, to the uh, to the karka, to the avodas karka. They don't apply to uh, something which is talish. So, in any case, Shabbos has this advantage over Shmita, and therefore we use the term godol by the klal of Shabbos, klal godol amru b'Shabbos. 
What about the Klal Gadol that is cited by Shemitah? Yes, we find an advantage that Shemitah has over Meiser. The Gadol Oysha Shashvi, the liability of Shemitah, is more manifested Yosef Mina Meiser. The Ilu Shvi is Isa. Baby Machal Adam, Baby Machal Behema. The halachas of Shvi apply to uh, something which is Machal uh, Adam, human food, Baby Machal Behema, or animal food. Vilu Maser, but the halachas of Meiser only applies to Machal Adam, Baby Machal Adam Isa. So the, uh, the advantage a Shvita has over Meiser that it applies to Machal Adam, Machal Behema, Machal Behema, Osach Dusha Shvius. Therefore, that is the basis and reasons why the, why the Mishnah uses the term Kral Godoyla by Shvita to imply that Shvita has an advantage over Maser. Says the Gemara. But what about Baraka Pura's version? Ulu bar kapara, the ton klal gadol and maser. Bar kapara, who used the term gadol even by maser. I'm going to explain that. What advantage does maser have over something else? It says more yes indeed. Gadol oinchel shal maser. Yoisim shall pay up. The liability of maser is more wide ranging than than the halachas of pay up. Why is that? Diilu maser isa betein of yarak. The halachas of maser apply. Even to figs or to vegetables. Vilu peya. Less the betain of yark. The halachas of peya don't apply to figs or vegetables. Peya means leaving over a portion, uh, for instance, the corner of the field for the yani and for the poor people. That doesn't apply to a fig tree or to vegetables. Now we know that that um, maser min hatoyra b'dayrais only applies to three items: dogon, tirosh v'yitzur, as Rashi explains. Dogan the, the grains, tirosha, grapes, viets or olives. Midra bon, however, they added even a peris elon, uh, fruit coming from trees, peris elon, the or vegetables. So even fruits and vegetables are chayev. But ma'is a midra bon. Now the Gemara maintains that the locha of ma'iser applies to all types of fruits and vegetables. And even to ta'in of yark, as opposed to peya which won't apply to these two items. Where do we see that? This is none of you saw in the Mishnah. Klal Omer B'Peya. This is a rule applied to Peya. When does Peya apply? Kol Shu Eichel. Something which is regarded as a food which is edible. Vinishmar. And uh, it is something safeguarded, meaning it's not hefker, it's not ownerless. Vigedula Imena Aretz. And it grows from the ground. Ulukitasa Ka'achas. It is harvested all at once. Umachnis lekiyim, lekiyim, something which uh, which is not perishable. It's something which uh, can be stored. Chayav bepeya, something which fits these criterion, something which has all these qualities, is chayav bepeya. Explains the more. What are we coming to exclude? And Rashi explains, by the way, that this is learned from the pasuk of ktsir. The pasuk tells us so. Bekutzruchem es ktsir artzuchem. When you go ahead and you cut off the. Uh, the exterior, you harvest your, your tvua, you must leave a portion of the aniyam, that is the mitzvah of peya. And the Gemara learns from there that since Katsir is cited as the example of the, uh, the mitzvah of peya, therefore something, only something which fits the, uh, fits the uh, description is chayiv and peya, something which, which is, um, resembles Katsir grains which contain all these five elements, these five properties, five qualities, only that is chayiv and peya. The Gemara will explain. Oichel, when the mission tells us only something which is oichel, edible, is chayv and peya, we're coming to exclude lim ute, to exclude sviche, stis vekoitza, these plants of stis vekoitza, which are generally used for uh, dye, for uh, paint. Therefore, we don't regard them as something which is oichel and is not chayv and peya. The next word, the mission of anishma, something which is watched, safeguarded. Lim ute, hefka, hefka, coming to exclude hefka, which is ornerless. That is not chayv and peya. They could do them in art, something just grows out of the ground. Lemute, kimei, and opitreus, these types of mushrooms, they're not considered to be gedulai min arts. Ulukitosai ka'achas, something which is harvested at once, in one shot. Lemute, to exclude teina, a fig, because the figs, they, uh, they are uh, harvested incrementally, uh, one at a time as they become ripe. They're not considered to be lekitosai ka'achas, and they're potter from peya. Umachnisilakiam Lim Ute is coming to exclude Yorak, vegetables which don't have really a long shelf life and are not stored.
So therefore, all these, all these things are excluded from Peah. And the last two things that were excluded were the Te'ena, the figs, and the vegetables. So this is something which is not Chayv and Peah. Says the Gemara, this restriction only applies to Peah. With regard to Mitzvah of Maisa, we find the Mishnah which says, Klal Amru B'Masa, Chacham gave a general rule. When is something Chayv and Maisa, Kol Shu Eichel, edible, Vinishma, guarded. Lafuke Hefker, Vigudul Ben Aretz, and it grows from the ground, Chayv and Maisa. Ve'ilu. However, those last two restrictions, Likitasa Ka'achas, needs to be harvested at once. Umach Nisalakim needs to be something which has a shelf life and is stored loitnam. The Mishnah by Meiser does not mention these qualifications. Apparently, these aren't necessary. So we find a, uh, a Chumrah, something which, which um, Meiser has above and beyond Peya, because it applies even to some, some items, which Peya does not apply to, for instance, something which is not Lekitas not picked at once, and something which is perishable. So that's why, that explains why, according to Bar Kapora, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Tesefta of Meiser indeed uses the word Klal Gadol by Meiser to denote its, its hierarchy, its advantage over Peya. Now why didn't we, why didn't the other uh, versions, uh, for instance in the Mishnah, didn't use, didn't refer to the word Gadol when it comes to Meiser? Since we find this advantage, this is agreed upon all, that Meiser has this advantage over Peya, explains Teisvis, since the, uh, the Chi of Meiser, when it comes to these items, for instance, the Te'en on the Yarek is only Mitra Abon, as we mentioned earlier, Menatura, Meiser only applies to Doga, Natira, Shviyitar, grains, grapes, or olives. Everything else is only Mitra Abon, therefore, since it's only a Dindra Abonon, the Rabban, the Chacham, the Tan of the Mishnah, did not use the word, did not see a need to use to apply the term Gadol, which is reserved for things that are relating to, uh, to advantages. Minat Torah, for instance, the Halacha of Shabbos over Shviyas, which is a Midaraisadik advantage, to the advantage that Shviyas has over Maiser, which is an advantage Minat Torah. And only there did we choose to apply the word Gadol to denote its advantage. Now, Rashi explains why, why really, why indeed the Chachamim not, um, not apply a Chiv, Midra Banan at least, by Peya as well to the Te'en of Yarak. Just as we find that the Chachamim made a Chiv, established a Chiv for Meiser, a Chiv Dara Banan, by all, of all types of fruits and vegetables, including the Te'en of Yarak. So why, when it comes to Peya, all the Menatur, there's no Chiv of Peya when it comes to Te'en of Yarak. Because it's not doyma, it's not similar to katzer, which is, which is grain. Nevertheless, why didn't Chacham at least establish a chiv midrash when it comes to te'en of a yark? So Rashi explains that when it comes to Meiser, since the Chacham were the ones who established this chiv when it comes to all, all other types of fruits and vegetables, because once again, only the grains, the olives and grapes are chayv the Chacham were the ones who applied, who enacted, established a chiv when it comes to everything else. All other fruits and vegetables, Says Rashi, they didn't want to differentiate. We find many times the Chacham applied their halachis, their chiyuv, and their in broad terms. They didn't seek to differentiate between one type of tree and the other, and they didn't exclude the tain of a yark. They applied the chiyuv to all types of fruits and vegetables equally. However, when it comes to peya, we don't find that Chacham established a chiyuv. It is a chiyuv minat Torah. A chiyuv minat Torah for anything that is similar to grains. And since tain of a yark, don't fall into that category. They're not similar to grains because they're not harvested at once or don't have uh, shelf life. Therefore, they were excluded from Torah. And the Chacham didn't see, a, didn't see a need to go make a new Takana specifically for these two items. So in summary, the Mishnah by Shabbos and Shviyas, and according to Bar Kapar, the Brisa by Meister as well, uses the term Godel. What is, what is the point and purpose? What is the... Uh, the implication of the word Gadol, the Gemara concludes, Gadol means to say that it has an advantage over something else. So when it comes to Shabbos, it has an advantage over Shemitah. The Allahis, the Einish of Shabbos, the liability, applies to something which was Talish before Shabbos, or to something which is Mechubar on Shabbos, as opposed to Shemitah, which only applies to Mechubar, to something which is attached to the ground, or the Malachis, which are performed with the actual earth. 
Therefore, in Shabbos we find Klal Gadol. We find Klal Gadol by Shvi'is as well, because it has an advantage over Maser. Because Shvi'is applies to Machal Adam, something which is consumed by, by humans, and Machal Behemah as well, as opposed to Maser, which is only a Chiv, strictly, exclusively to Machal Adam, according to Bar Kapara. Maser also contains the word Gadol because it has an advantage over Peir. Because the halachas of Maeser apply to uh, Te'en of Yarak as opposed to Peya, which doesn't apply to those types of items since they're not, not harvested at once. And the Yarak is exempt since it is not Machnish Yelikim, it's not something which is stored, it's not something which has a long uh, shelf life. Continues the Gemara. Rabu Shmo the Amr Tavayu. Now let's go back to our Mishnah for a moment. We have three categories in the Mishnah. We have three types of forgetfulness, three types of shkogas. We have number one, he is shogag in the Iker of Shabbos, on the entire concept of Shabbos. And there he brings one chattas for everything. He had a shigigas Shabbos, he forgot that today is Shabbos, and he brings a chattas for the entire day. Whereas shigigas Malacha obligates him to bring a chattas for each Av Malacha. Says the Gemara, what about a case where somebody never knew about Shabbos? What is going to be the halach in his case? Is he regarded as a shogeg and needs to bring a chattas or not? We have a machlek, Rav Shmuel, the Amr Tavai. They both said as follows. Mas Nisan, our Mishnah, the first category which tells us that Shecheach Iker Shabbos, he forgets the entire concept of Shabbos. He will bring uh, at least one chattas for everything that he did. Our Mishnah is referring to a case, Be'etina Yishenishba Lebein Anachrim. A, a child, a small child, who was uh, cap- taken captive amongst the Gentiles, and he never knew, he never learned about Shabbos. He never even knew that he was Jewish. Or the ger shenis ger ben anachrim, or a ger who, uh, who converted. He was megayer, as Tesis points out. He was megayer amongst uh, three uh, three yidden, but then he went ahead and lived, went to live amongst the Gentiles. Ger shenis ger ben anachrim, and he never learned about Shabbos. So in these two cases, the Mishnah will tell us that he brings a chatas, he brings one chatas for the entire episode, for everything that he did as a result of his ignorance. So in these cases, these individuals never knew about Shabbos. Nevertheless, Rabbi Shmuel tell us they bring a chatas, one chatas for everything that they did. Avol hikir. But in a case, a typical case, where one knew about Shabbos, he was fully aware, and then eventually somehow he forgot about the concept of Shabbos. In this case, he can't simply bring one chattas for everything that he did, everything that resulted from that ignorance. In this case, chayav, I'll call Shabbos for Shabbos. He needs to bring a separate chattas for each Shabbos independently. Because only in a case where he never knew about Shabbos, then we say, well, everything that happened as a result of that ignorance is regarded as a single entity, a single shkaga which requires only a single chattas. But in the case where he knew about Shabbos, in that case, we regard every Shabbos as a separate entity. It needs to be a separate chattas for each Shabbos, regardless of how many melachas he did on those Shabbos. Continues the Gemara, we learn to now Mishnah. Shabbos, one who forgets about the entire concept of the Shabbos. He brings one chattas for everything that he did as a result. Says the Gemara, lav mechlal. Doesn't that imply, doesn't that mean, the Havi lady, the Amikor? The Mishnah says he forgot, he's Shecheach. Apparently he once knew about Shabbos. And he simply forgot. And the Mishnah tells us that even in that case, he brings one Chattas for everything. So this doesn't really concur with Rabbi Shmuel, who tell us that in this case, he needs to bring a separate Chattas for his Shabbos. So that's more, no, loy, no. My Kola Shecheach Iker Shabbos. What does the Mishnah mean when it says, he forgot about the concept of the Shabbos. The Mishnah means that the Ikra Shal Shabbos was Shachoch Memenu. It was forgotten from him, Ikra Shal Shabbos, meaning he was never aware about the concept of Shabbos. And indeed, this concurs with Ravish Shmuel. He never knew about Shabbos. It's so not that he forgot about Shabbos. The concept was forgotten from him. And indeed, in this case specifically, he needs to bring one chattas. 
Aval says the Gemara, he kerel by Seif Shachach. My, but in the case where he once knew about Shabbos and then he forgot about the concept of Shabbos, are you going to say, Ma, are you going to say, what is that Allah? Chayef. I'll call it Shabbos for Shabbos. But in that case, you'll be Chayef. Feed Shabbos separately. Adatan, if so, let's move on. Let's proceed with the Mishnah. Category number two, level number two is that he, uh, he knew about Shabbos and uh, he forgot that today was Shabbos. The Mishnah tells us he needs to bring a chatas for each Shabbos separately, regardless of how many malachas he did on that day. Says the Gemara, according to this assertion, according to Rav Shmuel, that the only time he brings a single chatas, one chatas only, if the Shabbos was forgotten from him, meaning he never knew about Shabbos. He was a teenage shenishba. He was a child who was taken captive. And only in that case, since the entire concept of Shabbos was never known to him, he brings only one chattas for everything that he did. But if he was once aware about, chat, about Shabbos, he simply forgot the entire concept. In that case, we regard each Shabbos as a separate shgoga, as a thing on its own, an entity on its own, and he it needs to be a separate chattas. If so, why does the Mishnah bring this case? Why does the Mishnah want to proceed to the next level and tells us that, you know, when he brings a separate chattas for each individual Shabbos, that's if he... He knew about the concept of Shabbos. He's your day because Shabbos. He simply forgot. He miscalculated that today was Shabbos. He thought today was Friday. In this case, the Shkoga applies to the day itself. He needs to bring a chattas for each Shabbos. Why does the Mishnah proceed with that case? Let the Mishnah give us a greater lesson, a greater chiddush. You know, in which case he will have to bring a separate chattas for each Shabbos? Even in a case we forgot about the whole concept of Shabbos. Let's see inside. Says the again, Aval he kerel b'sev shachach. But in the case where he recognized, he knew he was aware about the concept of Shabbos. He learned about Shabbos. He was not a tinik shenishba. Ule b'sev shachach. Then afterwards, he forgot about the concept of Shabbos. My, what is Allah chadir chayav al kol Shabbos for Shabbos? He needs to bring a separate chatas for each Shabbos. If so, adetoni. When the Mishnah goes and proceeds and teaches us, hayoideya ikur Shabbos. One was aware about the concept of Shabbos. Vaso malach is harbe, but Shabbos is harbe. But he forgot that today was Shabbos. And as a result, he did many malachas throughout many Shabboses. Meaning each Shabbos came along and he thought it was Friday. Chai v'al kol Shabbos v'Shabbos. In that case, he needs to bring a, shab- a chattas for each independent Shabbos. Why does the Mishnah teach us this halach? The Mishnah could have taught us a much greater halach, a much greater chiddush. Listen, the Mishnah should tell us. He could have said shachach. Even if he uh, knew about Shabbos, but then he entirely forgot about the content of Shabbos. He will still bring a chattas for each Shabbos separately. The Koshkein, huh? And certainly in this case, when he's presently aware about the concept of the Shabbos, he merely forgot that today was Shabbos. Certainly in this case, he needs to bring a separate chattas for each Shabbos. So why does the Mishnah skip over to this case? Or seems to be a, a lesser chiddish. Because certainly in this case, he's liable for each Shabbos separately. Since he knows about the concept of the Shabbos, his shkug applies to the day. He forgot that today is Shabbos. It's a more simple halacha. The mission rather should have taught us the greater chiddush, even in a case where a person forgets about the concept of Shabbos. He needs to bring a separate chattas for each Shabbos. And he can't merely be yoytze, be exempt, by bringing one chattas for everything. Says the Gemara, My hayyadei ikr Shabbos. What does the Mishnah mean? When it says, Yodei ikr Shabbos, this means level number two in the Mishnah, Hayyadei ikr Shabbos, Means Misha Yodeya Ikrosha Shabbos Vishachacha. Indeed, that's exactly what the Mishnah is telling us. When well, the Mishnah proceeds with the second category, one who's Yodeya Ikrosha Shabbos and as a result does many blachas, we're not referring to a case where he presently knows about the concept of Shabbos, he's aware about Shabbos, he simply miscalculated on the day. He forgot that today was Shabbos. Rather, the Mishnah is exactly speaking about this case. My Yodeya Ikrosha Shabbos. What does it mean he's aware about Shabbos? He once knew about the concept of Shabbos. He was aware about the concept. He wasn't attaining Shanish. He knew about it. And then, subsequently, he forgot about what? About the concept of Shabbos. And indeed, Mish is telling us that in this case, he needs to bring an independent chattas for each independent Shabbos. And this concurs with Rav and Shmuel. Says the more, yes, indeed. Is that so? But you mean to say that Let's say he's presently aware about Shabbos. He didn't forget about the concept of Shabbos. He knows Shabbos. 
But the forgetfulness applies to the day. The Shkoga was the Shigigas Hayoyim. You forgot that today was Shabbos. So you mean to say in that case that a different halacha will apply? He won't be able to get away with simply a chatas for each day, rather a chatas for each malacha separately? Ava loy shachachamai, are you going to say, what is the halacha there? Chayov, I'll call malacha or malacha. That is chayov, a separate chatas, for each malacha independently. Otherwise, if, uh, if even in this case, the halacha would be that, he would bring a chatas for each day, then the mission should have included both together. The mission should have said, that you know when he can bring a chatas per Shabbos, per day? In one of two cases, one of two scenarios. Either he forgot about the concept of Shabbos, or he knows about the concept, but he forgot that today was Shabbos. Then we should have wrapped them together and told us both halachas together. In both cases, he will bring a chatas for each day. Apparently, the Mishnah is teaching us, no, that you know when he can get away with a single chatas per Shabbos. That's only in a case where he forgot about the concept of Shabbos. But if he knows about the concept, but simply miscalculates on the day, in that case, he needs to bring separate chattas for each malacha. If so, if that's the case, let's move on to the next category, to the, to the last level in the Mishnah. The fact that the Mishnah goes and tells us, what is the third level? He knows that today is Shabbos. And he performs many malachas throughout many Shabbases due to the fact that he's unaware, he forgot that these are considered to be malachas, the mission tells us. Only in this case, Chayov, I'll call malacha malacha. Only in this case, he needs to bring a chatas for each, for each individual malacha. So why does the mission go and tell us this halacha? That in this case, there are separate chatois for each malachas. The mission should have told us a greater chilish. Listen. The Mishnah should have told us, Hayyadei Iker Shabbos. One who, who knows about the concept of Shabbos but forgot that today was Shabbos. Even in that case, he will bring separate chatois for separate malachas. This is a greater chiddush. Even though the Shkaga applies to the day, he forgot that today was Shabbos. Nevertheless, you maintain that separate chatois need, for, for, need to be brought for each individual malacha. So why does the Mishnah tell us this halacha? This seems to be a great chiddush. Once again, the shkaga here doesn't apply to the individual malachas. It applies to the day. He miscalculated the day. Nevertheless, you maintain that in that case, he needs to bring a separate chatas for each malacha. So why does the Mishnah tell us this? Why does the Mishnah jump to the other case? Well, he knows it's Shabbos. He forgot that these are considered the malachas. In that case, and only in that case, he needs to bring a chatas for each malacha. We can apply from there, we can infer from here that this halacha of individual chatas is per, per malacha won't apply to the case we forgot that today was Shabbos. Because otherwise, the mission should have told us that Allah. The The mission should have told us that one who forgets that today was Shabbos, he needs to bring separate chatois, one chatois per malach, and certainly, of course, in the case where he knows that today is Shabbos, and he simply forgets that these are malachas. Of course, in that case, the shkaga applies to the actual malach. He needs to bring chatois per malach. So apparently, that is not so. Apparently, only in this case, where he knows that it's Shabbos today, he simply forgot that these are malachas. Only there will he bring a chatas per malacha. But in the case where he forgot that it was Shabbos, apparently in that case, he won't bring separate chatas, rather a single chatas per malacha. Says Gmar Ella, you must say as follows. We must reinterpret the whole sugi here. Our Mishnah which tells us the first category, the first stage in our Mishnah, which speaks about Kola Shechech Iker Shabbos, one who forgets about the concept of Shabbos, he will bring one chatas for everything that he does. It's speaking about Kishihikir B'Sev Shochach. Even if he knew, he was not a Tinik Shanishba, he was aware about the concept of Shabbos. He simply forgot about the concept of Shabbos after he knew about it. In that case, certainly, he will be chayv only one chatas for everything that took place as a result. Udurav Shmuel Nami. Rabbi Shmuel never meant to tell us that in a case where he was an ordinary person, he was not a Tinnik Shanishpa, he knew, he learned about Shabbos, and then he forgot about the concept of Shabbos. Of course, Rabbi Shmuel never meant to tell us that in that case, he would be chayv more than one chatas because the shkaga was a single shkaga, a single forgetfulness. He forgot about the concept of Shabbos. When Rabbi Shmuel come and tell us that a Tinnik Shanishpa, a child who was captured, he needs to bring one chatas for everything. They mean to say, 
even a tinnik shenishba. Perhaps you, you might say, he's not liable at all. It's not his fault. He never learned. No, Rabbi Shmuel tells us, yes, even in that case, he did a malacha, he did a uh, malacha on Shabbos, he's liable somewhat, he needs to bring a carbon. He needs to bring one carbon for everything that he did. And the Chiddush, the lesson of Rabbi Shmuel is that even the Tinesh Shanishva needs to bring a Chattas. But certainly, in the case of the Mishnah, where one knew, he was aware, he learned about Shabbat and then forgot. Of course, he needs to bring one Chattas for everything that he did. Once again, let's look inside. Ella Mas Nisan. Our Mishnah, the first halacha, the opening halacha in our Mishnah, which tells us, Kol Shechech Iker Shabbos. He forgot about the concept of Shabbos. He will bring one Chattas. Of course, we're speaking about a person who knew about Shabbos and he forgot. Rav Shmuel telling us that even a Tin Shanishba, who never knew about Shabbos, will also have the same halacha, you fall into the category. Which category? Of the first level, where he brings one chatas for everything that he did. This is how we're meant to learn Rav Shmuel's halacha. This is how we're meant to learn Rav Shmuel's Shmuel both tell us, Afilu. Even a child who was taken capture between the Gentiles, the Gersh and his Gal Ben Anochem, a convert, a Ger, who went to live among the Gentiles, they both never knew about Shabbos. Even they will bring a Chatos. They have the same halacha as one who knew, who learned, who was aware about Shabbos. And then he forgot. Just as he brings a Chatos, how many? One for everything that he does. So to this, Tinek Shanishba will bring a Chatos. For what he did, we regard him as a shaykh. Afilu tinek shenishba ben anochem v'ger shenis gal ben anochem kehiker ubesav shachar dami ve'chayev. He's regarded as a shaykh, not as an oynes, not as something which happened unavoidably. He is a shaykh and needs to bring a carbon chatos. Continues the mash gemara. It's actually a machlekes. This is the opinion of Rav Shmuel who regards this tinek shenishba as a shaykh. For Rabbi Yechonon. Rabbi Shem Malakish Damat Havai. However, Rabbi Yechonon and Shem Malakish both hold no. Dafka Hiker or Besayv Shachach. This halacha of Chatas only applies to one who was aware. He learned Hiker. He learned about Shabbos and then forgot. Only he needs to bring a Chatas. He is regarded as a Shoygig. Avol Tinek Shenishba Ben Anochran. But a Tinek who was taken capture by the Gentiles, the Ger Shenis Gael Ben Anochran, a Ger who went to live amongst them. Who doesn't know? Who never learned? Potter. These people are Potter. Why? Let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi did a mask of Potter, which is uh, 14 lines from the top. It says Rashi Potter. The Kasavi, Rabbi Yechner Shlokish, Oimer Mutter Anasu, one who maintains. He thinks. He's unaware about the, about the severity. He thinks it's Mutter. It's permitted. Anasu, we regard him as an Oynas, as something unavoidable. He was an Anas. He's not held accountable. It's not considered to be a shaykh. However, Rav Shmuel hold, yes, okay, it's not, it's not negligence, it's not uh, maliciousness. Nevertheless, he did a, a malacha. We don't regard him as honest. Honest means something which is completely unavoidable. Honest means it, it doesn't relate to the person. I, I didn't do it. It was something unavoidable. However, this is, even though he's not really, uh, he's not really, uh, it's not, certainly not amazed, it's certainly not uh, negligence or malicious, nevertheless, it's something which you can't say is completely unavoidable. It's something that he did. He wasn't, uh, he had no education. He had nothing to, to, uh, to hold him back. But nevertheless, it falls into the category of shaygig. It's something to be considered to be unintentional, inadvertent. And he brings echatos. So in summary, we have a locha in the beginning of the mission which tells us, shachach iker Shabbos, one who forgets about the concept of Shabbos and he's bring one chatos. Now what about a Tinek Shenishba? He never knew about Shabbos. We have a Machlekes. Rav and Shmuel say he brings a Chatos. He's considered to be a Shoigig, according to Rabbi Yochanan. And Rabbi Shimon Lakish, he's Potter, he's considered to be an Oynes. Now getting back to the Pshat now, Mishnah, all agree that the Pshat is very simple. We have three categories. The first category is one who forgot about the concept of Shabbos. He needs to bring one Chatos. He forgot that today is Shabbos. He needs to bring a Chatos per Shabbos. He forgot that these Malachis, a raser needs to bring a separate chatas for each av malacha. Continues the Gemara. Meisvei, we have a kash from a brisa on Rabbi Yochanan Rishlakish. Klal gadol amr b'shabbos. A great rule 
was said regarding Shabbos. Shabbos. One who forgets about the concept of Shabbos. He did many malachas as a result. throughout many Shabboses. He only brings one chatos. Ketzat. What is an example of this? A child who was taken captive amongst the Nachrim. The ger is gay ben Nachrim. A ger who converted and went to move between the uh, move between the Gentiles. These individuals never knew about Shabbos. And he did many malachis throughout many Shabboses. He needs to bring only one chatas because what is the source of his of his averus of his. Uh, Malachis, what is the, the root cause here? The fact that he's unaware. It's a single shkaga, therefore it only requires a single chatas. V'chayv al adam achas, and all the blood that he ate throughout entire, his entire life. He only brings one chatas. V'ala chaylev achas, the same thing regarding any chaylev, forbidden fats. V'ala v'dezor achas, only one chatas for all the, uh, the art of worship that he did. U munbas poiter. Munbas holds? This case... Is not, has carries no liability. He's a tinnish shenishva. He had no awareness whatsoever. He doesn't need to bring any chatos. V'kach munbaz don This is how munbaz would present his case, his halacha in front of Rabbi I hold that this tinnish shenishva. He had no knowledge, no awareness whatsoever. He is potter from chatos. Why? Hayil umezid kori We find that the Torah calls, labels a a person who does something bemezid. Uh, uh, intentionally doesn't have error. Terry calls him a chayte. Rashi brings a pasuk nefesh ki sechta. We speak about a there, and the Torah regards him as a chayte. Vishayi kari chayte. We find that a person who does something inadvertently, unintentionally, he is too called a chayte. So we make that connection. Ma mezid. Shoy shelo yedia. Just like mezid is certainly speaking about something which is done with awareness. He had yedia. He had knowledge. Av shoyi. Similarly, regarding a shaygig, it needs to be somewhat related to mezid, although, although not all the way, certainly must be a distinction between the two, but it's somewhat, uh, somewhat loosely related. And here too, there needs to be some aspect of knowledge, shoysle yidiya. He knew, he had some awareness. And therefore, if a tine shenishba does a chet b'shaygig, he's not chay v'chatas whatsoever. Oh, mother of Akiva, if you're going to equate shaking and mezid, let's go all the way. I'm going to add to your uh, to your binyan uh, avir, to your um, connection. If you're going to equate shaking and mezid, then why don't you equate them all the way? Just as mezid is speaking about, he has the awareness as he's doing uh, the chet. Meaning, when Bunba says, well, just as uh, mezid means he had previous knowledge. So Shaggy also needs to be speaking about he had previous knowledge. Says the Rakiva, why stop there? Just as Mezid had present, he has knowledge as he's doing it. Av Shaggyik. Similarly regarding Shaggyik, perhaps. Shaggyi said, here too. We need to equate it to Mezid all the way. He knows as he's doing. If so, that's not a Shaggyik. Omar Lai Hain. So Munbaz wasn't deterred, he said. Hain, you're right. But Koshkain, Shaggyi Safta. Certainly you've added, meaning I agree with that. You've added, you've helped me, you've supported my opinion. And the Gemara will explain how this works. How can we regard somebody who has full awareness as a shaygi? The Gemara will explain. Amr Leib Akiva responded to this. If you're going to agree and require full knowledge by a shaygi as well, then it's not a shaygi. L'dvarech, according to your words, it's not a shaygi, it's amazing. In any case, we have a machlekes. Regarding a tinek shenishba, according to Munbaz, he's potter because there's no awareness, there was no prior knowledge. According to Rabbi Kiva, it seems that he's chayiv. Says the Merkatani Mia. In any rate, the Mishnah told us, the Brisa told us, Ketzad was an example of one who brings a chatas on account of his shichacha, uh, his forgetfulness. The Brisa told us, Tinek gave us an example of this Tinek. Apparently, he's also chayiv chatas. Bishleim leRav Shmuel Nicha. Certainly, according to Rabbi Shmuel, this fits well that a tinik shenish, but he brings a chatas. El al Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shem Melachish Kashi, according to them, they hold that there's no chatas by a tinai shenish, but this brisa seems to contradict them. Amri lach Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shlakish. So they respond and they say as follows: Loi mi ika munbaz the potter. Wasn't there munbaz another shita here who says indeed that a tinik shenish is potter on account of his lack of knowledge whatsoever? 
So he holds it's, it's potter. Anan damrin and kimbunbas. We indeed follow, we're compatible with the sheet of munbas, who hold that a tinik shlishba is potter. Okay. So in conclusion, the same achleikis that we had between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Yechon and Rish Lakish regarding Atinik Shnishba seems to be a machleikis between Rabbi Kiva and Munbas. Says in my time of the Munbas, indeed, what is the reason, uh, what is the basis for Munbas' assertion that a shoygik needs to have some, some knowledge? Uh, certainly you can't really connect a shoygik to a mazit. A mazit is different than a shoygik. Apparently it's based on a posse. Dechsev as it says, Torah achas yilachem lo isabish gogo. This is a pasuk by Chet, the transgression of Abu Dzora. The pasuk says, one Torah we will have, you will have for a person who transgresses b'shoigik inadvertently. V'samachle and right nearby the pasuk says, v'anefesh asher tasim yodrama. The nefesh that will do with a uh, a high held hand, meaning b'mezit, intentionally. So the pasuk is is connecting somewhat shoigik and mezit. Since they're standing next to each other, we're meant to learn one from the other. He is shoygig l'mezid. Torah connects shoygig with mezid. Ma mezid. Shoy shelo yadil. Just like mezid is speaking about he had knowledge, he's doing it maliciously. He's doing it with yadil. Av shoygig shoy shelo yadil. Similarly, regarding your shoygig, it needs to be done with some sort of knowledge. So this is the basis for Munbaz's is halacha that a tinnik shenishba is exempt. He's not regarded as a person who's liable to bring a karbachatas because he never knew. He had no awareness. He had no idea whatsoever. For Rabbanon, the Rabbanon who disagree with Mumbas, how are they going to use these psukim? Hai Torah achas. My Avdili, what are they going to use these psukim for? They're not going to apply it to this halacha, but they don't require a yudia by a shaygik. They hold that a tenek shenishba is chayv. Says the Mormon, they need this psukim for a different drasha. Like the Makrile, Rabbi Shua Malevi Lebre. Rabbi Shua Malevi taught his son, Torah achas. So this is one pasuk. One Torah will be for the ones who do bishkaga inadvertently. Uksiv, and it says vechisishku for loisaso is called mitzvah seila. So it's in the same parsha there. You've uh, you've inadvertently done uh, these uh, these mitzvahs, and Rashi says speaking about the zara, the chet of idol worship, which is shakel, which is shkuli equated to all the mitzvahs. So this is the chet that the pasuk referring to the chet of the zara. Uksiv, and then it says. The nefesh will, will do be a drama, but maze it maliciously. And uh, so the Torah here is speaking about Avedah Zorah, Vishoygig, Avedah Zorah, but maze it. And the Torah uses the word Torah Achas Yelachem Loise Bishgoga. Torah is equating the entire Torah, meaning we went to connect the Allah of Karban by Shoygig, which we find elsewhere, to the Allah of, of Karban by Shoygig, which we find by Avedah Zorah. How is that? The entire Torah is equated. The Karbanis brought by a Shoigig is, is meant to be learned from the concept of the formula we find by the Dezor. Just like by the Dezor. There, when do we bring a Chatos by Shoigig? When it is something which done by Mezit, done intentionally, will incur, will result in a curse. So the Dezor has this flip side. On one side, there's a curse for a mazit. On the other side, it is a chatas for shoygik. So we see that this formula by the Zara will also be equated, will be connected, and brought over, carried over to the entire Torah. Av called Dover. Similarly, regarding all the karbanis by shoygik in the Torah, will only apply to something which is an avera, which carries a penalty of curse when done by mazit. Av called Dover, Shechayav, and Al a curse. Something which brings a curse. When done intentionally, Val Shigigigos and Chatas. And indeed, if it's done by Shkog, will bring a Chatas. So this formula is not from the Zara. When is there a Chatas? When done uh, unintentionally, that is only with something, a transgression, a Vera, which carries it a potential curse if done by Mesit. So in summary, the Torah connects to Abba the Zara. The Torah connects the Chola Torah to Abba the Zara. But by the Zara, we find a Chi of Chatas. When done uh, inadvertently, Bishkog, we find a curse when done by Mesit. Munba says, we learn from Abed Azara that Shoigig is, equ- is connected somewhat to Mezid, and just as Mezid is done with awareness, Shoigig also requires awareness, and it comes to cl- exclude this Tinek Shanishba who never had prior knowledge. The Rabbanon say that the Hekish is as follows We equate the Torah to Abed Azara, we apply the formula that we have of the Zara elsewhere, just like the carbon of the Zara by Shoigig is speaking about something which by Mezid carries as a curse. So we have the Mezid, Kores, Shoigig as Chatas. Similarly, elsewhere, the Shoigig brings a Chatas only if it is something which potentially carries a Kores if done by Mezid. 
But certainly we're not meant to equate Shagig Amazed like Munbaz and therefore a Tinek Shanishba, who never had any awareness whatsoever, the Slchaif to bring a carbon Chatas. Okay, let's take a quick Chazara of uh, today's Da. The Gemara began by explaining the term Godel. Shabbos is greater than Shviz because it applies to Tolosh and Mechubar. Shviz is greater than Maser because it applies to Machal Odom and Machal Behemo. According to Bar Kapora, Masa is greater than Peah because Masa applies to Te'en of Yarak as opposed to Peah. We have three categories in our Mishnah. The basic one, where he only brings one Chattas, is if he forgets about the concept of Shabbos. What if he knows about the concept, but he forgets that today is Shabbos, he needs to bring a Chattas for each Shabbos. He knows that today is Shabbos, but he forgets about the Malacha. He needs to bring a Chattas for each Malacha. What about if he's a Tinek Shanishba? He never learned about Shabbos, according to Rabbi Shmuel. He regard, he's regarded as a shayi and brings one chathos, according to Rabbi Yechran. And Rabbi Shmuel Lakish, he's part of, he's regarded as an honest. And the more concluded that this machlek is actually also found in the Brisa. Munbaz holds that Tinnik Shanishba is potter. And Rabbi Kiva holds that Tinnik Shanishba would be chayv.